This is our EVI lunch break, which is an online monthly Q&A um, that we hold on the first Wednesday of the month on Zoom. And my name is Caitlin Cameron. I am the project director for Thrive, which is the outreach and education arm of Eco Village at Ithaca. Ever since the founding of Eco Village, we've had an education component. It was one of our founding goals as a community to um, outwardly share what we're doing here and uh, hopefully inspire other people. Um, so, so that's my role. Um, but I will, I will let Katerina introduce herself in a moment. But we're both going to be speaking today about the membership process. And we uh, both went through that process recently um, within the last year and a half or so and are both uh, fairly new residents to Eco Village. Um, we've both had experiences as renters and I'm now a shareholder here. So we have those different experiences we can share. Um, but we're also both on the membership committee or um, we have a prospective resident team and a membership committee. Those are part of how we function. And um, and we have an expectation at Eco Village that, that residents put in two to four hours a week of community service. And so that's one of the ways that Katerina and I both contribute to the community. I, um, we do have a newsletter as well. Um, I would say that goes out every couple of months with information about our programming and ways to engage with us. We also have the social media accounts. Um, and we also um, work with volunteers. We have a membership program and we have a website where all of this can also be found. I think I'll leave it there for now and turn it over to Katerina to introduce herself. And then she's going to dive into specifics about our membership process. And then we will um, open it up to question and answer. Take it away. All right. Yeah. Hi, everybody. My name is Katerina. And um, I moved to Eco Village about a year ago, but I have lived in Ithaca for five years prior to that. And um, one of the reasons that I chose to move to Ithaca was, well, it's a small thing, but I had been um, researching eco villages for probably 10 years. It was something that was really interesting to me and something that I think I wanted to do. So when I was trying to decide where to move after graduate school, I saw that Ithaca had an eco village. And so I was like, okay, that's good. And I was not ready at the time. Um, to be able to uh, purchase a home. So it took a couple years, but um, yeah, so it's really, I mean, it's really wonderful. I'm happy to be here today and share with you guys. Uh, Caitlin and I did recently go through this, which is kind of nice because I think it's kind of fresh in our minds. Um, so basically when um, you get to the Eco Village website, one of the things we ask people to do is spend a lot of time on the website. It's actually quite big. Um, it, can feel like a rabbit hole. I remember spending hours and hours on it being like, whoa, I found this nook and cranny and this nook and cranny. And it can give you a pretty good sense um, of, of what it's like uh, just by exploring and reading all the different things. There's links to videos and personal stories. So it's separated in three sections, live, learn, and grow. And the first section, live, that's where you're going to find the majority of the membership stuff. And so... Within here, there's a section called living here, and this is where you're going to want to go. There's This is what we're going to be talking about today, which is pursuing the membership process. So basically, the first thing that we want you to do is to explore the website. We've put some links here to look at. So um, there's a video I was just re-watching again earlier today um, that has multiple different residents, including one of our founders. It's like a 30 minute long YouTube video. Um, talk about, you know, what life is like here and uh, kind of virtual tours. Then there's also a good family section. Um, a family here wrote an article about, you know, why they chose to come here and why they chose to raise their kids here. and um, I have a three-year-old daughter um, and, you know, it's, it's pretty great 
to to I, I wish I would have been raised in a place like like eco village for sure um there's a one a lot of safety just in the fact that like last night was trick-or-treating and it was awesome because like they could just run and you weren't worried about a car hitting them because there we don't have cars in the internal areas of the village um and there's just a level of safety because everybody knows each other to an extent like there's 240 people I think who live here so you might not know every single person's name but like there's always people around who especially the kids like everybody tends to know who the kids are um so the perspective after exploring the web website you know reading the frequently asked questions the prospective resident package is going to be the next thing you're going to want to like download or print out whatever is best for you. So I have that pulled up. Mm -hmm. All right. So the first part of this uh, is just more so meant to be a reflection for you to reflect on, you know, why are you choosing to come to Eco Village? What are the motivations um, to, yeah, to really think about seeing if it's the right fit for you? And so I thought that these were pretty interesting questions. And I think some of them really do get to some of the points where maybe it, it wouldn't be a good fit. Like some, you know, and sometimes uh, I think, maybe a person's in personal crisis or something and wants a lot of help or support. And there can be reasons where maybe it, it won't end up being exactly the right fit. So we ask that you do this, you don't turn, at least for me, I didn't have to turn anything in. Um, and then this is uh, the worksheet that I used kind of to as like my checklist of like, I've done this in the membership process, I've done this, what do I have left to do? So I was uh, fortunately local, so I didn't have to do any five day trip um, because you can, you don't, you can do them individually separated by time. So it's just five visits essentially. Um, so, you know, once I had done the website, I, you know, checked off the date and that I had done it. I read uh, the visions and principle statements. I answered the questions about co-housing. Um, I viewed the virtual tour. Then I scheduled an eco village. Oh, well, then I did the the tour, the actual tour, which Caitlin, you that's like done through Thrive typically? Yeah, there's a tour section on our website that um, describes the options we have. So um, we hold a monthly free public tour on the last Saturday of the month at three o'clock. So there's information about that. And for people who are not able to come to that tour time, we um, can schedule a private tour, uh, but that is for a fee. Um, so we have both those options. Yeah. Um, yeah. So then... I came and I did the tour and for me, things worked out very fast and very like surprisingly well. Um, I think there's a lot of different experience when it comes to uh, the space between like making a decision and moving here. So like, for example, there's one family right now who they moved out here from another state and they're renting a house just waiting for a house to become available that works for like their family with three children. And so um, for me, I decided I want to move there. And within like a month, it was like, I got out of a lease, a place, be like there was multiple places available. I couldn't buy, but there was a rental. So it all just really was kind of seamless. Um, but checking the website, you know, frequently, or if, if you do end up coming up here and, you know, you can't purchase a house until you've completed membership or rent a house before you've completed. So uh, I know that before I'd completed membership, I went and viewed one of the rentals and uh, somebody else ended up getting it because I still hadn't completed membership. So it's good if you're considering coming just to, to 
uh, finish the membership. Yeah, if I could just add to that point quickly, um, sometimes it gives you an advantage if you are trying to buy or rent, if you've already completed that process, um, because sometimes sellers are want the process to go quickly or um, really only have the attention span to work with people who are ready to go. Um, so that's one reason why we really encourage people to complete this process, um, uh, you know, even if you're not quite ready to move ahead and move here, um, it, it really can help you down the line to jump on something. Um, and so we keep a, a list of, um, of uh, people who have uh, completed the process and, and gotten in touch with the prospective resident team to um, confirm because the, this checklist that we're going through is, is very self-reporting. So we don't have the capacity to sort of monitor everyone who's interested in Eco Village. Um, so that, that checklist that Katarina has been showing you, um, we rely on you to be honest about what what you've done um, and we will um, uh, sort of keep keep that list of people and your contact information once you've contacted us to say you've completed those those steps. Um, Katarina, did you want to finish the checklist? I just uh, yeah. didn't interrupt your no, flow. Totally fine. Um, so the next step, this was maybe where I found it the hardest to navigate was in like scheduling, being able to get to like meetings or meals. Um, and I think the membership team is kind of working on improving that um, process um, and really giving people like a buddy to help them through that because it can just be so, you know, there's three different neighborhoods, all which have their own meetings, um, you know, and the meals are community wide, but just knowing when, when you can go, are there any spots available left? um to be able to attend is it a meeting that outsiders can attend or not so getting to those and I think it's just does it say on here yeah two community meetings then there's a, a social event which is just required for tree um I think yeah just required for tree and the social event can be like a meal um or we do potlucks, stuff like that. And then two work team activities. And so that's usually, I think in tree every Monday morning, um, the buildings, are not buildings and grounds, but like the community garden group, like people come to like clear this or different kind of, maybe it's, if it's a bad weather, they'll clean the inside of the community house. So that would be like a, a work team activity. Caitlin, do you know like other, what other neighborhoods do? Yeah, um, so uh, on the meetings, um, many of <laughs> our meetings are still happening through Zoom or in a hybrid fashion. So it is possible for, for those who are going through membership who are not in Ithaca uh, to attend meetings remotely. Um, and I think the requirement is two meetings and one of them should be a business meeting. So um, that's something to keep an eye on. And when we say meetings, we're talking about a neighborhood board meeting or a village association meeting. Um, we have five different governance levels. So there are a lot of uh, monthly meetings that are happening um, mm -hmm. that you would be that would be eligible to completing that requirement. Um, uh, I think it is a requirement for everyone, not just tree, to attend a community event of some sort. So that would be a community meal. Um, that could also be one of our large community-wide events. So we occasionally will have um, like a talent show or a winter solstice event or um, a summer pie baking event um there's going to be a fall fest event next weekend so these sort of sanctioned community level events um would qualify for that and then the work uh uh work parties 
could be an outdoor activity like um a work party around removing invasives or planting natives. It might be cleaning up the bus shelter that we have on our property. It might be helping with dish crew after a community meal. Um, it might be helping, um, there might be a work day to clean one of the common houses. So that's that gives you a flavor for um, what that would be. And that's uh, obviously something that you would have to be here present at Eco Village to participate in. Um, Katerina, would you mind bringing the, the, the checklist back up on the screen? Oh, is it not up? Not right <laughs> now, no. <laughs> Sorry, it's on my other screen, I guess. I have three screens. What else did you want to um, mention about this? I, th I mean, I think honestly, like with this, the questions are going to be the best. Can you see it? Yes. Okay. I think the questions from you guys will probably be the best direct director of, you know, where we go from here. Um, yeah. 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 Um, I'm just trying to think if there's anything else I, I really want to emphasize about our process. Um, so I think it's important to know that our community does not vote people in. We do not decide on people uh, as individuals, you know, based on your personality or those kinds of things. It's really a self-selecting process, um, which is why that's the rationale behind um, asking people to come in person. Um, we're not trying to create a burden or a financial cost. We're really trying to, to make sure that that prospective residents um, get a sense for what the community is like and and discover whether it's a good fit. So that's why part of that checklist um, in sort of the end of your checklist would be coming here in person um, for five mm -hmm. days. Um, again, those five days do not have to be consecutive. Um, and at that time, we also have you speak to one of our residents so that you have um, a more kind of informational interview um, experience to to make sure everyone's on the same page about uh, the basics of living here. Um, and it is, as Katerina mentioned, in order to close on a house sale or mm -hmm. to have a lease, um, that's the point where your membership requirements must be met. So I, I was kind of a special case where um, I needed to get here quickly to start my job for Eco Village. And, um, and so I ended up completing some of my membership requirements when I arrived here to, to live. So something that that is worth mentioning is one can live at Eco Village for up to 30 days without having gone through the membership process. Um, so that gives a little bit of leeway for someone who's a renter or something like this, um, where maybe you need to take the tour or participate in a work party. Um, as long as you complete all those requirements within that first 30 days of living here, um, that should be fine. And um, while we don't vote on individuals, um, what does happen is that the, the board, the neighborhood board, does approve your lease or your home sale. So there is a level of... Um, bureaucracy or, or um, governance uh, involved with all of this. Is there anything else we're forgetting, Katerina, to mention? In terms of requirements and our process? I don't think so. I think, yeah, maybe we should hear the questions that they have. Yeah, I guess. Um, I guess my question is, uh, I'm a 22 year old, senior in college and um you know my plans for next year are still a little uncertain but you know as a single child free youngish person I guess I'm wondering like is 
is this more like for parent age to raising your kids kind of or like would you say there's a place for young people figuring out stuff um, I guess that's my question yeah um I can start and then if I if Katarina wants to uh-huh. jump in so I'm also um child free single person I'm youngish not as young as you are um and I would say um sort of that 20 to 35 age range is where we we don't have a lot of people um we do we do have some folks like we have a couple that are in their you know they're around 30 um that are graduate students um we have uh, a few we have a few people in that age range who are child free um but i would say uh about 30% of our population is 65 plus and that's a trend that's happening in intentional community generally um there are mm-hmm. a lot of people who uh when they're retirement age um seek out this kind of community and have the financial resources to do to do that. Um, this is a uh, mainstream middle class level housing, um, and the all the housing was built with the intention of being owner occupied. Um, but that being said, there are always some rental options. The the challenge, especially because like I had I had been a renter as well. Actually, I, I had always been a renter um, until a few months ago. So there there are certainly people here who can't afford to buy a home or don't want to buy a home. Um, but uh, it's just harder to guarantee that there will be a rental available. I guess that's my caveat to that. Um, mm-hmm. Cause we don't have any buildings here that were built to be rentals or managed uh, to always be rentals. So it's just, um, so yes, you're certainly um, would be welcome. You would have um, some folks here who are in that same um, sort of phase of life or have the same sort of lifestyle. Um, we do have a mix uh, of um, age ranges and um, and the kinds of housing people are in. Anything else you want to add? It like depends on what you're looking for too, you know? Um, I mean, it's like multi-generational, right? So we have the full spectrum of, of life and that's what we want to have here. We want to have young people. We want to have children. We want to have older everybody right we want it all um and yeah there's been like like there was the we had this nursing student I remember meeting him when he was you know 22 or something and there are yeah definitely people in like in around the 30s too but like we live in Ithaca so it's like there's two colleges there's tons of young people there's bars there's you know what I mean so it's like I think it really depends on what you are looking for 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 where you live next like do you want to be in a community where you're participating in maybe you know yeah, growing something and then eventually having a family there or do you want something a little more wild and crazy you know <laughs> um so yeah and I think if you visit you get a good sense of like yeah mm-hmm. and that's another uh important reason behind requiring a visit because it helps people understand the culture of Ithaca, the culture of our community, um, understand uh, the relationship of where we are in location, you know, related to the universities and job opportunities and schools and and things like that. Um, uh, Okay, Lynn, I think I saw your hand. The the meetings that are uh, required to attend, I just wanted to um, point out that uh, there's a really good working document that that keeps getting updated once you get to that point. It tells you which which neighborhoods are, are having what kind of meetings at what time and and whether they're hybrid or not. Because when I first received that document in the process, I um, I I selected a meeting that was fit into my schedule and sounded interesting, and I did go to a board meeting. Uh, with the tree neighborhood, and it was very, very interesting, and and so uh, it it's very easy to um, to connect to those to the meetings. Um, 
once you get to a certain point, I can't tell you the person's name right now, they'll send you that document and all the time it's being uh, updated. So I just wanted to share that. And now I really will mute. <laughs> That's great. Thanks for that perspective. Um, yes. Yeah, so that currently that calendar of meetings is not outward facing. It's not publicly available. So um, if one gets serious about completing that checklist, um, there's an email uh, that you would contact and they would send you this living document that gives you the list of uh, the sort of schedule of, of those meetings and it's continually being updated. Um, we just ask that you let the facilitator know if you're planning to attend a meeting as a guest, just so they have a heads up. Um, but we do also occasionally have in-person meetings. So for example, in the experience weekend that's happening um, next weekend, Tree, Tree neighborhood, the third neighborhood has a monthly gathering. Um, and that happens to include a budget meeting, a business meeting this month. Um, so uh, anyone who's attending the experience weekend will be participating in that meeting. And that would be a business meeting. And that would check off one of those requirements. Who else has a question? I see Lisa. I'm curious about the um, when you're a renter. Um, I see on the Airbnb, there are people who are looking for to rent someplace for November through May or April or something. If you're renting, I presume from what you've said that if it's longer than 30 days, then you need to go through this process and have the lease, the Airbnb kind of lease signed. But during that time, do you, how do you get treated at governance meetings? I mean, are... And particularly if it was a longer term rental, if somebody actually, you know, wanted to move out of the area, didn't want to sell their place, but wanted to keep renting it. Do those, do the renters kind of have full rights and privileges in the community or are they less, more provisional because they don't have a permanent stake in it? Yeah, I mean, I, I think I have the answer, which is my understanding is that I had the right to share my opinion and to vote on most issues, except anything that had to do with the budget money. Mm -hmm. So I have no shares mm -hmm. in the organization, mm -hmm. no stake. So, um, but like if they're trying to decide whether to put a new staircase in, or so, I mean, I mean, I guess that would cost money. So maybe not, but, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I've never felt like a, treat like yeah not treated the same mm -hmm. um or badly because of my status as a renter mm -hmm. yeah I'll add to that so um I, I guess a short-term stay if you were staying for fewer than 30 days you would not one would not be right. eligible to, you wouldn't be a resident or a right. member um, mm -hmm. at that point. So you would not be, you could participate in things going on. You would not be able to vote or, um, per, you know, be a, um, voting isn't the right word for consensus, but you wouldn't be a, a voting member. Um, mm -hmm. But if you, if you do get to the point where you're living here for more than 30 days, you've completed the membership process, you have a lease um, that's been approved by your neighborhood board, then you have almost every um, right and privilege as a shareholder. The, the one caveat that I'm aware of to that is major financial decisions. So, mm -hmm. um, and I don't know how that's defined. I think each neighborhood mm -hmm. might define that differently because um, something to be aware of, we have the three neighborhoods. Each neighborhood is its own cooperative legal entity so right. when you live here uh even though you're a member a resident of the village you also have a, an affiliation with a specific neighborhood and each neighborhood has its own governance board um making decisions for that neighborhood level and then we have a va a village association board and a level that's village level 
Um, so that can get complicated because um, each neighborhood does things a little bit differently. So that's why I say, you know, the, the caveat is that it would depend a little bit on which neighborhood you're in. But generally, resident um, renters, uh, they're expected to, you know, contribute two to four hours of service like anyone else. Um, they're uh, able to participate in any meeting or decision like anyone else, um, except for major financial decisions. Got it. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Any other questions? Not at the moment. Might find them as others ask questions. <laughs> Great. I think I saw Wendy. So yeah, I got a quick question on the renting. Uh, this we've we've heard this several times now as we've had been in these meetings that a lot of people do actually rent before they can actually go in and buy. Uh, do you get situations where somebody comes in to rent, but their rent the rental period is up? or their rental availability is up before they get a chance to buy, which means they don't have to bounce another rental or even have to bounce out of the village temporarily. Mm -hmm. It's a situation I'm kind of in right now. Like my rental is up in March and I'm trying to purchase my home in the time frame, if possible, you know, but yeah, like there's technically, it'd be like if another rental doesn't come up, which I can tell you, I haven't seen a rental come up. I can't even think of one rental in the last year. That I've seen come up. Um, it's pretty infrequent, um, but it's weird. It's like when I moved here a year ago, there was like seven things on the, you know, the page where there's rentals and sales. And then now it's like, there's, you know, nothing really. There's one apartment I think for sale. Um, but yeah, I, like I would have to move back into Ithaca or outside of Eco Village and then be wait, you know, is like what it would be like, I guess, right? There are a few a few scenarios that I've experienced. Um, uh, there have been some people who are renters and who will never be able to afford to buy and have have moved between several units within Eco Village, um, have been able to find rent rental situations um, in different households. Um, and I would say if if it's a good fit, if it's someone who uh, people think, you know, is a good contributor to the community and, and want to see stick around, um, there will be efforts to help people find um, ways to stay here. Another way that manifests is that we um, we occasionally have internal lending um, programs to help people uh, put the finances together to purchase. Um, but we also have had people who were renters who were never intending to buy who've had to leave the community because they lost their rental situation. Um, so that's, uh, you know, the challenge with being a renter generally. Um, we have a couple of situations where people purchased a home here, were not able to live here for various reasons and would rent and then eventually decided to, they moved back. And so people, um, had to find other accommodations for those kinds of reasons. Um, and there are situations like my home, I choose to rent my second bedroom to someone. So that's that's an owner-occupied rental situation. We also have um, non-owner-occupied rentals. Um, so there's a mix of, of uh, scenarios for rentals um and unfortunately the short answer to your question is there's no guarantee as a renter that um you'd be able to stay indefinitely any other questions i see amy hi um i was wondering 
about the three different neighborhoods? Like, what's the relationship between all of them? Like, are they are they driving distance from each other or totally different or they're just three sections of one big place? I've never been there, so I'm just learning about it now. Yeah, they're, they're walking distance. Um, so the land is, I think, 185 acres. Um, and then 100, 170, yeah. 170 yeah. acres. And uh, it's like 5% of it is developed, some small right. amount that Caitlin probably knows the exact percentage. <laughs> um, so like from a bird's eye view, it's like there's one here, one here, one here, you know, they're all really like a four minute walk from each other, mm -hmm. but they all are also distinct neighborhoods. Um, mm -hmm. I think especially like how they designed it is like there's a main road and then all the parking is located on the outskirts of each neighborhood. So, mm -hmm. um, God. They, that almost creates like a, a little internal pocket. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, but you can walk to each and the, the relationship's good. I mean, there's little differences. So like, one of the big ones with tree and the other two is the other two are governed by cons a consensus model and tree is dynamic governance or sociocracy. Um, and so I think people who have lived across, like lived in tree and then also lived in frog or song um, have said that really creates like a difference in how things go. But I think everybody is, living at eco village usually for kind of the same reasons right which is yeah. to have a community a closer community than you'd find um normally and then also to uh yeah care about our environment and try to make more radical decisions with that totally thank you that's awesome mm -hmm. Yeah, just one last point on that. Um, our neighborhoods are very dense. Um, if you were to go to our website, um, there are a few like drone videos and um, YouTube videos that might give you a sense for the aerial view. Um, and that's intentional. So that's, we're intentionally dense to conserve the footprint and to have as much of our land available for recreation, natural habitat, farmland. We have four farms here. Um, but it also has that social component where when you put cars on the periphery and you have these pedestrian streets in the middle of the neighborhoods and the homes are densely clustered, um, it's safer and it's more communal. It's more um, likely that you will interact with your neighbors and um, and build that sort of community sense. So, so those are some of the um, factors that went into how we're laid out. Other questions? Lisa, did well, you it, yeah, I just needed to unmute. Yeah, yeah. I mean. Right now, there's only the one apartment, the 750 square feet small apartment on in um, tree available. I mean, how many units come available within a year usually? I mean, is there any general sense of what happens over a year's time? I mean, if, yeah. if one is wants to kind of commit to this concept in a year's time, is it apt that one's going to get a unit that's more or less, you know, reasonable for their needs, or is it going to be three years, or how many people are on the waiting list and are, you know, ready to are hovering? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, yeah, it is a very popular place, and um, I just want to clarify that we don't have a waiting list in the traditional sense, so um, right. uh, it's not sort of like a first come first serve. I mean, it's, yeah. sorry, it's not um, like you're first in line kind of situation um so we do have the list of people who've completed membership but um there isn't a like a prioritization to that so i just want to make sure everyone's clear homeowners make yeah the yeah so ultimately the homeowners or the seller um gets to choose who they sell to we also don't have any price ceilings or you know caps on right. on that so there is that element that that the 
the home prices have been high lately, um, uh, depending on what the seller needs. Um, I'll just share my personal story, which is I was a renter. I realized after living here for six months that I wanted to stay here. And so anytime a home became available, I would, you know, visit the home, talk to the owner um, and consider it. And uh, I I was able to purchase the home I'm in because of my role with Eco Village. You know, like the, the seller chose me. Um, I was not the highest bidder. There were four bids on the home. I was not the highest bidder, but they um, selected my bid because they valued keeping me in the village. Um, so it's, it's, yeah, it, that's just to try to illustrate that um, it really depends on the seller right. um, in terms of the pricing and, and how they decide who, who to sell to. Um, but uh, what was I going to say about that? So the advantage of being here already, mm -hmm. if living in the village, um, is that you get advance notice of properties that are coming for sale. So we, if we are members, if we uh, live here, we have a week's advance notice um, of properties and then they get listed on the rentals and sales page. So on our website, we have a page that's specifically rentals and sales. Um, and so sellers are given that the the list of people who've completed the the membership process, the sellers can also directly contact those people and say, um, right. I know you're interested you know, this unit is available. Now to actually answer your question, it's hard to predict. Um, this year has been kind of busy with um, sales and oh gosh, I can't put a number to it, but I think it's somewhere around maybe six or seven or eight homes that turned over this year. And that's out of, um, 90 have no. 100 homes we actually technically have 103 I, units because we have three units that are sort of basement rentals mm -hmm. um i could be that's a rough guess on the numbers but uh every year there are things that turn over but but it's hard to predict yeah. how many and how frequently and what size home those will be yeah yeah and like, there's like not been one from song in the last year. I think that's gone up for sale. I mean, it's just that's true. And song. So the the three neighborhoods are frog, song, and tree. Song is uh the neighborhood with the bigger homes. So mm -hmm. tend to be more families, um, and and things like that. Yeah. So I hope that answers your question. It's a difficult question to answer. Yeah. which is why we tell people to mm -hmm. you know regularly look at the rentals and sales page because some of it's unpredictable and it and it's and I mentioned it's popular so we will often get um quite a few people bidding when something comes available um it's not clear the condo that's currently for sale um has been available for a few months um and that in that instance it was someone who passed away last december and so it was kind of we were waiting for the family to um decide what they were going to do with it so it's fa um extended family that are selling that unit mm -hmm. so that was rather long-winded sorry about that um other, thank you yeah we have about 10 minutes left lynn what do you got Hey, yeah, this time I did unmute. Hi, uh, yeah, thanks for taking a second question from me. And this one is a question. So the neighborhoods are distinctive looking. The three, one is a little, they're different than the next. Mm -hmm. um, but, but they're one village, considered one village with three neighborhoods. What is the, what is the adhering principle or thread that holds the neighborhoods in the village or or is there a sense of autonomy of the three neighborhoods is there are there 
is there a bigger overarching um, something or other that holds the three neighborhoods together or do they feel, do the people within the neighborhoods feel distinct from the other neighborhoods or I hope that's kind of, uh, it's not very clear what my question is, but is there some kind of an overarching thought yeah, that, that's, I, I think, that's I think holding together? You mean. Um, thank you i'll be quiet and, and no you're good this. you're good um i'll start and and katarina you can add on so um it's a little bit of both so each neighborhood does determine their governance their um their own core values um each neighborhood has its own culture to a point um it, their own finances um and each neighborhood might have their own uh, events or you know meeting events, um, activities that build community within that particular neighborhood or help you know accomplish um, things that need to get done for that neighborhood. Um, but there are also a lot of things that are happening at the village level. So almost all the community meals are open to the whole village. We have a lot of um, events uh, and, and goings on that are open to the whole village. And, and we also have um, communication uh, primarily through email listservs, but we also have uh, internal website with a forum. Um, so, so a lot of us are in touch with each other every day through emails. Um, so like the sharing culture of uh, needing to borrow um, a cake pan or, you know, asking someone to pick something up from the grocery store or um, looking for a ride from downtown, like that, that sort of um, cooperation and sharing culture tends to be village wide because most of our email communication is village wide. Um, but I guess the ethos that's overarching is that um, sustainability and community, those goals, those visions around um, having a lighter impact on the on the environment um, and having a desire, to build community or be part of a community. Now everyone interprets those a little bit differently or is able to live those things out at a you know different in a different way. But I would say those continue to be the guiding principles um, for the whole village. Katarina, do you want to add anything to that? We do have two um uh, legal entities and governance structures that are village wide. So we have the the village association that makes decisions and owns infrastructure that's used by the whole village. So there is um, sort of that governance structure there. And then we also have our land holding entity, EVI Inc. And they are a nonprofit um, that owns all of our land. Um, so they are um, making decisions related to the land. Um, for example, they um, are the ones that that uh, hold the leases for the farms. That would be one example. So there are activities that people uh, could be engaged with that are at that whole village level. I see Wendy. Just quickly, um, I noticed that Jamie has an interesting question in the chat and Amy has one, but she's left. So I wondered if you could either email us. Oh, thanks. Yeah, thanks. I didn't notice that. Thanks. Um, okay, so there's a question about schools from Amy. Um, yeah, I see. Do you, so do you want to talk about schools? Well, yeah, she left. But that's interesting, connected to the Ithaca Waldorf School. So we're not connected. And there's some places, I think, in Sweden where the Waldorf School ends up, there is like eco, uh, eco communities connected with it, but that's not this case. 
Um, there is a local Waldorf school. And I'm not sure if there's any current kids who attend that. I know there's a lot of kids who go to Montessori. There's a couple of Montessori schools, but um, yeah, it's not like embedded it within. Um, and then the other question was about the um, the ovens, which is funny. So in Frog, there's a lot of houses that don't have ovens. I think they were all built without them. And then some people over the years have added them. And the community house was thought to be like, this is where we have these shared oven space. And it's still, you can still use any of the community kitchens. So I can use the one in tree if I need to like cook a huge meal or something. Um, but the other neighborhoods typically have ovens. I think there's a couple that don't have them in song, but I think every house in tree has an oven. I don't. Yeah. So that was part of the, I would say with each neighborhood, um, they incorporated lessons learned from the past neighborhood. So um, things to do with um, storage space, uh, accessibility, um, the kitchen layout, um, you know, that that's going to vary quite a bit depending on what neighborhood you're in. The song neighborhood is the most custom. So unlike frog and tree where there were standard standardized designs that were you know replicated um the song neighborhood each household designed and built their own home so the the um kitchen setup and kitchen amenities are going to be uh, vary quite a bit in the second neighborhood the first neighborhood was built without ovens with this very utopian idea um and so some of us uh, do use the community kitchens, the common house kitchens for larger things like food preservation or big baking projects. Some people um, like I rely on just like a little, a little um, uh, like convection oven. So it really can vary. It really depends on which house you're in. Yeah. You can put an oven in though. Like you can put one in if your house doesn't have one. If yes, you're you could. You, yes, people have renovated their kitchens over time um, or added things. Like none of the homes were built with dishwashers, for example. And so some people have added dishwashers or yeah, it can vary quite a bit. Uh, I think we have time for one last question. If anyone's got a burning, burning desire to get one, one more in. Um, so we all just end by saying that we are constantly um, trying to improve our um, website membership process. Um, remember, everything is done by a volunteer, so it's not always as fast as we'd like. Um, so we we have been trying to make things more and more clear as we can when it comes to the membership process. And we have the prospective resident team. Um, that's the email that's available on the Living Here page. So those folks um, really are, are there to help people go through the process and answer questions. Um, so, so yeah, it's a work in progress. We're um, always looking for ways to um, simplify things, make things more clear. That's that's about time for us. I want to thank all of you for joining us. And um, we, as I mentioned, slowly are making th these videos available on our YouTube channel. So Thrive has a YouTube channel. You can link to it through our website. If you go all the way down to the bottom, it has all our social links there. Um, and the public, uh, the prospective resident um, team is a resource. We have a frequently asked questions page. Um, and we hold these Q and A's once a month. So lots of ways to be in touch with us and get your questions answered.